No hat, new hair. So you've learned how to use a circular polarizing filter and you've started to notice that it doesn't affect the whole car. Fortunately, I'm going to show you a few easy steps on how to fix that. What is going on guys? Shooting Dave here. So good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what I'm about, well, I'm a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles and I make photo and video editing tutorials. So if that sounds like something of interest to you, then please do consider subscribing. For those of you watching who don't know what a circular polarizing filter is, well, Basically, it's just a filter that screws onto the front of your lens and as you rotate it, it reduces and removes the amount of reflections on the subject that you're photographing. It is most commonly used in automotive photography and, well, occasionally landscape photography as well. What it's used for in automotive is to get rid of the windshield reflections and cut down on unwanted reflections on car paint, basically giving you a much deeper, more vibrant and saturated looking car paint, which is more desirable. And, well, if you use it for landscape photography, it makes the sky much bluer and the grass much greener. Great! Well, sort of. What happens if you actually want to reduce all of the reflections on the car? Well, to do that, you'll need to rotate it twice, which means, yes, you guessed it, shooting on a tripod. Annoying, I know, but I'm guessing that most of you have a tripod and you probably haven't used it in some time, so it's about time we made good use of that tripod. To get the necessary photos for this effect, you'll need to first polarize for the windshield. That means removing the reflections from the windshield. Once you've done that, take a photo, then repeat the same process by polarizing for the side windows. This should be roughly 90 degrees of rotation on the circular polarizer. Now, once you've done that, it's time to bring the photos into Lightroom and I can walk you through the next couple of steps. Okay. Okay, so inside a Lightroom, I have two exposures that I'm going to be working with. We have one here that is polarized for the side of the car, so you've got nice clear reflections down the window, and we've got one that's repolarized for the rear of the car, so the rear of the car is nice and clean. And you can see the difference between the polarization that it makes to all these reflections down the side of the car and round the rear. Now, to make this effect work, what you want to do is select both of these then come up to the top, go to photo, editing, open as layers in Photoshop. And what this will do is basically put those two photographs on top of each other inside of Photoshop in a single document so that we can work on them from there. So once Photoshop has loaded those two layers on top of each other, basically what I like to do, even though this is shot on a tripod, is I like to align these images because there could be some slight adjustment in between in each photo. So basically select both your layers, then come up to the top left, edit, auto align layers, I'm going to set projections auto, hit OK, and let Photoshop do its thing. As it's only two layers, it shouldn't be too long, so just a couple of seconds for that to happen. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to put the more obvious layer up top, okay? So this is the one that's polarizing for the side of the car, and we want to blend this with the one that's beneath, this one here. Now, in order to do that, it's very simple and very quick. Basically, just take the top layer, change the blend mode from normal, and then we're going to come down to darken, like this. And basically, it's super subtle, but we have removed and controlled all of the reflections down the side of the car. So basically, we're showing off how deep and red that vibrant car paint is of the Ferrari. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Let's look at another way of doing it if you don't know how to get photos out of Lightroom into Photoshop, or maybe you're using an illegal copy of Photoshop. Then basically, what you want to do is go to File, and we come down to Scripts, and we go to Load Files into Stack. And then basically you're going to have this dialog box come up and we hit browse. Once you're in there, what you want to do is navigate to where these uh, photos are. So I've got these two in here. I'll take those two, hit OK. And basically it's going to do the same thing. It's going to load those two files that we selected, one on top of the other. And we're basically going to walk through the same process again. So once it's loaded, select both of those layers, edit, auto align layers, Projection set to auto, that's fine. Hit OK, let Photoshop do its thing. And then basically we're gonna come over to the side here, select the top one, change the blend mode from normal to darken, and then take a look at what it's doing. So this one is really controlling the reflections around the front of the car. So if we come in here, turn this layer on and off, you can see much deeper red down here. And basically, a much nicer looking image. So that is how you blend two CPL exposures together inside of Photoshop. Now, if this technique interests you, but you don't own a CPL filter, well, I've left my favorite CPL filter in the description down below, so you can go and pick one up. Just 
buy one for the biggest lens that you own. So basically look at the largest lens that you own, find out the filter size on that and buy a CPL filter for that. Pro tip, that way you can use step up rings to mount it to your smaller lenses. Oh, you're welcome. And that is all from me guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I am at Shooting Dave. And as always guys, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, it's a long way.